our forces are under attack. Should you become a nuisance, I'll kill you myself. Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Report Remastered. Uh, today it's going to be a PVZ, a DEFCON 1 replay sent by RJB here on Troy. Top left, it's going to be Snow, our red Protoss player. And in the bottom left, it's going to be Action, the Macro Zerg, our blue Zerg player. It's going to be an excellent replay because RJB does not miss. So... Basically, here on Troy, you can go ahead and make your opponent's main base an island by killing these two assimilators so that no ground units can pass through these unless it's like a ghost or something. So, I think ghost is the only unit that can fit between these once the assimilators are dead. Uh, I'm a little bit fuzzy on the details here, but yeah, basically, you're on an island. So, we have seen attempts <laughs> to do that in ASL, and one of them succeeded, and it was an immediate GG, so that is an interesting concept for a map to have. <laughs> Alright, man. What's the play? What's the play gonna be here? It's gonna be a gateway. Come on. Gotta be a gate. We're not gonna forge this thing. Yeah, gateway on the top of this ramp. Here on Troy, Terror the Overlord's Count in the correct direction up the top left here, and it looks like a hatch first timing. Here from action, although, hang on a second, he's got nine drones. Oh, interesting. Okay, a nine hatch first, not 11 hatch. So, hmm, so not a nine pool, not an over pool. Not like an 11 hatch first, it's a nine hatch first out of action. Very interesting. So a little bit more aggressive than 11 hatch would be here, but not by a whole lot. Then you get your pool at 10 supply for action. Snow, oh, <laughs> two gating it here. This is interesting. Man, what do we got here? Two gate, a lot of zealots coming in. Urgh, is this gonna be an attempt to lock action out of his own main base? He will have two bases, but we, no pass through. Interesting, interesting to see what the effect would have on a Zerg player. Because they can still produce units outside of this wall. Alright, man. Throw it on the pylon. Maybe... Maybe it's a cannon fake out? Just pulling the drones here. To kill these probes and Robert the Zealot showed up. Robert the Zealot merch at falconpaladin.store. Oh, boy. So, three sets of lings on the way to handle this very, very emergency... Wow, emergency situation here at the natural base. There's a shield battery coming up. In response, we're throwing down a creep colony. Yo! What's the play, man? Oh, man, it takes so much longer to get a sunken up than it does for a shield battery to finish. Look at these zealots, three zealots, man. They're hacking away at creeps. There's a sunken coming up here. There's a shield battery. No, that zealot gets surrounded and picked off. Shield battery has a lot of shields. Use it, man. God, they want the sunken so bad. Look at the blocking, though. Oh, the sunken does go down, but these zealots are very injured. Fall back, zealot. Fall back to the sunk to the shield battery. Yes, gets topped off. But a sunken finishes, and I think that's all we need to shut this thing down. Oh, also surrounds. Gosh, surrounds are so hard. Surrounds are so difficult. This shield battery, though. Why are we not using the shield battery? There we go. Using the shield battery. It's about to be depowered. So that is over. The fun is over now. No more Zealous going on in. <laughs> oh, amazing. All right. See you later. See you later, Zealots and Probe. Good, t good attempt, though. Great response from action. Better response from action, man. Getting those lings out, getting those sunkens up. Had to make three sunkens, which did sacrifice three of those drones. But you know what? Staying alive is more important. He's at 12 workers to 17 probes now. Ooh. And still not expanding here is Snow. There we go. Finally tossing down the expand at 430. Goodness. I bet you thought that was a sneaky twofer, huh? I bet you were like, ah, oh, Falcon, I see you. This is going to be some kind of an early two-gate shield battery aggression. Action's going to die, and then we're going to do a second game. Ha 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 ha. The Zerg player lives. He lives to continue fighting. All right. So, two gate. Fun stuff. I guess he might 
as well continue making zealots here. Nothing wrong with having zealots. On the other side of it, what do we got? Nothing, man. It's just zealot production, zealot production. Drone, 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 drone. Overlords coming in here too. Finally, the first gas on the way. This Ling is doing a great job scouting. And he just got sniped by a probe. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. You should not be kidding me. Cybernetics core on the way. It's like, all right, well, I'm going to start harvesting some gas here. So I might as well make a cyber core. So I can make stuff when that cyber core finishes. Like dragoons or like a stargate or, you know, whatever you're into. Lair on the way with that first 100 gas. Metabolic boost going to be the second priority here from action. All's well. All is super well. And what's the play? What's the play going to be here, friends? Well, I don't know. I don't see a third base from action, which I'm a little bit concerned about for our guy, who is known as the Macro Zerg player. But he is... Oh, I can't click over there. I forgot. Something weird with that corner of the screen. I can't click on stuff or right-click on stuff. All right, so Drone's going to come down here and get a third base. Look at that moonwalk. <laughs> that was a fun little maneuver he threw up there. So where do you take your third base on this map? I guess at the main spawn location of the bottom right corner. It's exactly what he's going for. I do love a desert map, by the way. One of my favorite, favorite sets here. I guess it's weird, though, right? Because it was not introduced in the original StarCraft 1 release. We did not have desert tile sets or snow tile sets. Or Twilight tile sets, I think, either. Uh, and those that were added in Brood War. Oh, and then he locks it. Oh, so that Zealot Pressure can't do anything to this. You're going to lock some Lings in here, too, though. This is so interesting. Out of action. I love it, man. man check out RJB. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't want to lock people in. He's going to get these guys on the outside. And then, okay, so now this is locked. It doesn't look like it is, but it is. I promise. Nah, the Zealots, you know there are two Sunkins here, right? You saw there were two Sunkins here when you left? Okay. They're like, I guess there are two, still two Sunkins here. Bye. Like what? You thought Action would kill one of his own Sunken Colonies? That's a weird idea. Third one gets canceled. No need for that there. All right. Ling's on the run by. No, Dragoon. Using that big old body to block any more Ling run bys into the main base. You got speed. Don't care. You're not getting in there for a scout. I mean, what is it? It's Corsair production. Of course it is. Is it plus one Corsair production? No. Interestingly enough, going for plus one ground weapons instead. Corsair running around. Trying to deal. You know, trying to get scouts off. Trying to see what's going on here. There's a macro hatch. Scourge are on the way. Are there already Scourge out? I don't know. What are we... Are you locking more stuff? He wants, he's like turning every expansion, well, the 12 and the 6 o'clock expansions into island expansions. He prefers it that way. Action, what are you doing, man? I like this. Did I say check out RJB at youtube.com slash at RJB underscore TV yet? If I haven't, I should, and there we go. We did it, y'all. Ah, plus one air weapons get started from snow and a citadel. All right, fine. He sees that cyber core spinning and says, mm-hmm. Well, I already made six mutas. So, I mean, we're going to get here before that attack starts, that attack finishes, rather, that attack upgrades. So, it's not really plus one Corsairs yet, but I am going Mutas. Okay, so he's taking this base and locking the door to it, just like he did with his bottom right third base. So, fourth base he's turning into an island, really forcing Snow into some, uh, into some Sky Tech, right? Some Drop Tech. Hmm. So just kind of turning this into an island map sort of make Muta's better is my question. Look at this zealot. He's like, dun, 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 bonk, bonks right against this wall. It's funny because does it look like a hard wall? No, but it is because Brood War is weird that way. That's why we love it is for the weirdness, isn't it? I think so. But yeah, hit the like button, man. This has been a really interesting game so far. Honestly, anything on Troy is going to be interesting for a while. As long as it sticks in the ladder pool, it's going to have some really interesting stuff. So map control now belongs to action. However, this Corsair account is big. There are five Corsairs. They almost have the plus one attack. Muta is trying to soften up these zealots for future attacks. Yeah, yeah. All right. Scourge. Good pullback by the 
Corsairs get on out. Ooh, one Corsair dies, though. Okay, okay, good control. Great control by action here. But look, he's on four bases. And he doesn't... Okay, so he doesn't... He is going to hard lock it. All right. I figured maybe he was going to leave them at a slightly almost locked situation here, but... He's going for the full lock. Okay. No more ground access to this base. Got to drop it in. It's like Nemesis that way, right? I don't know if he... Did he manage to get up here and get these? I bet he did. I bet he did manage to get up. He got these ones too. Oh, he is really forcing Snow into shuttle play, which... Honestly, not that big a deal. It's not like Snow saying, Oh no, I have to make shuttles in a PVZ. Whatever am I going to do? Like, come on. Snow knows exactly how to use shuttles. He's one of the best players in the world at doing it. <laughs> Very funny, though. That's a lot of Scourge, man. That is a heck ton of Scourge here. Is that plus two Flyer Carapace getting researched? It is! Wow, action's going for plus two Flyer Carapace. That's so... Okay, this is... This is Falcon being happy that a Zerg player is actually making static defense at his bases that are surely to come under attack at some point because they're surely to come under attack at some point. Good heavens. But there it is. There are the Sunkens. They are wonderful. They are beautiful. They are marvelous. Scourge taking hits. Okay, so Snow finally taking a third base at 11 and 30. Very interesting. It's taken him so long to get here. He could have expe- Oh, this is an island too, though. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Every other available base, island base, island base, assuming that this simulator is gone, which I think we can assume that it is. No, don't fight an Archon. Good pullback. Good pullback. Yeah, hey, man. Storm's on the way. We are getting plus two Flyer Carapace. These Zealots are just getting shaded by Scourge. And the Zealots like, huh. This is so good. This is so, so, so crazy. I like this a lot out of action. He is like, okay, I'm going to play the map here. I'm going to play Snow. But I'm also going to play with the map. Or play the map, right? Not play with the map. I guess he is playing with the map by locking all this stuff up. Hilariously. Okay, so I mean, look, shuttles are on the way here from Snow. No real surprise there. This is so many Scourge. And the, plus, that Carapace upgrade is on the way. How are the Corsairs doing? Ground upgrades are at plus one. Corsairs are at plus one. There's no plus two coming in on those guys. I'm pretty sure there's some math that says there's no real reason. Nice snipe on a couple probes there to get more than plus one on your Corsairs. Kind of ridiculous. Softening up those zealots again for future purposes and future reasons. Oh, I thought I almost saw a scout coming in there. That'd be funny with all of the mass, mass. This is just air zerg, man. Okay, there are hiders on the way. But to this point, it's been scourge and mutalisks and some zerglings. But now we're adding hiders into the mix. I like it. I mean, hiders are just all around fantastic units. They are maybe the best unit for zerg in the game. Just best all around, right? They can do it all. They can attack air. They can attack ground. They can burrow. They're ranged. They hit like a truck against most things. They're squishy, yeah, but they've got that speed too, you know? So action's just been having kind of a fun time flying around. La 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 la. Keeping an eye on the Protoss army. That plus two carapace upgrade is now finished, which is very cool. He really wants these Corsairs, but... They are too dang fast. They are too fast for these uh, to chase down. As they should be. Ooh, wants that High Templar so bad, but also doesn't want to take a million hits from these Corsairs. There are a bunch. There you go. There are, wow, nine of them. All right, here goes nothing. Mutas are up. Taking down the cannons. The Scourge are covering... As the Mutas with that plus two Carapace are doing much better against those cannons than they otherwise would. The Corsairs don't want to come in here. There's a blanket of Scourge covering this area. The Mutas are going to town on the Nexus. This is incredible. Okay, Storm, Storm are whittling down. Okay, good enough. That's it. Zerg player decided that's enough. Couldn't kill the Nexus. Could not go for the non-guaranteed damage. Oh, he's doing such a good job keeping these Corsairs scourge-free. So, so, so good. 
Did these guys think they could walk through here? Is Snow confused by this concept? Does he not know how this works? He's got to know how this works. Nemesis has this concept. This is not a new thing to Troy. It's just maybe a little bit more available on Troy than it is on Nemesis, right? See, now the Hydras are here. They're doing pretty well against Dragoons and Archons. Not as good against these Zealots, who do have a plus one, plus one. They are mean, but if your Hydras are enough, but then the Storm is enough. Uh, pretty standard engagement here, right? Hydras would win this battle if Storm didn't exist, but it sure does. Ooh, ooh, Stutter stepping up to get that High Templar. Good snipe. They want this Archon, too. Real, real bad. They're going to get him. Absolutely. Do they want the Archon, or do they want... They want both. They want the Archon, and they want the High Templar, but I think they got the High Templar. They chose one and went for the High Templar instead. The Archon lives, although he shouldn't. He's way out in front here, and that's a hundred... Oh my gosh. Oh, Muta's getting some hits off on the Corsairs as they have to flee. Plus two attack on these Hydras. Cannons, kind of a big deal, but if you have enough Hydras, it turns into much less of a deal. Yeah, when the Protoss is pulling probes to try and deal with this, you know you're having a bad time. You know Snow thinks he can't ha hold it. This, uh, this army trying to save it. There is enough Protoss here, I think, to do this. But high ground concave is really not bad. Ooh, a DT comes in, though. Love the use of DTs. There aren't overlords in this army. Look at this, look at this DT just absolutely two-shotting these Hydras, helping win this battle. I think with that DT, I don't know. Maybe with the DT, it goes better for Snow, but I think Snow maybe still wins that battle. It's tough to say. 141 to 113 supply action is up, and a lot of it is Hydras. That's the supply. Oh, probe transfer of death here. Why? Why, Snow? Come on. You know what's out there. You know there's scary Zerg out there. Hydra sniped the cannon easily. And now, Mutas are helping against the Zealots. And all these Zealots are dying. And Snow's got to come from all over the right side of the map to try to deal with this. And he does. He's got two on upgrades on his ground units. The Hydras are at 2-0. Ten more Hydras are on the way. Snow kind of getting picked apart here. He's got 37 probes. More probes are dying. The only cannon at the natural base is gone. Oh no, probe death. So much probe death. More Hydras swinging on in here. Reinforcement scourge connecting on the Corsairs. Corsairs are dead. 130 to 70 supply. The natural base dead. There are Dragoons here to try to save it for Snow, but he's in such a tenuous position. The natural base is dead. The main base is under assault. His third base is a rolling, but action is casually on four bases. Pumping Hydras out 15 at a time. Stutter stepping in to the main base here. All the mutas are gone. I'm not sure action cares about that, but these zealots will help clear out these Hydras. And we'll see if Snow can stabilize here, but oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this just worm of Hydras coming in. Yeah, so all these Hydras get cleaned out, but guess what? Round two is now here. There are 20 more Hydras, and that's it. GG Snow taps out in game one of our sneaky twofer. Ha 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 Did get a sneaky twofer out on you, didn't I? I did. <laughs> All right, man. Good game there from action. I love this. I love this idea of just locking your own expansions behind you as you go in and take them. And then say, go, I have a bunch of mutas and a bunch of scourge. And if you try to drop on me, I'm going to have map awareness and map control. And you're not getting anywhere close to these drones. Now, what's fun is I did see a shuttle come through the production tab. I did not see any shuttles get any drops off. Nor did I see any shuttles die. So, I'm not sure if I missed one. You know what? We have rewind capabilities. Let's go back just a little bit here. See if we can catch what happened to that shuttle that got produced. Okay, so we're gonna play it. We're gonna go times like four speed. Watch that production tab. Right, right, three bases. Is this after the shuttle? After I saw the shuttle come through the production tab? Like at this point, I'm not sure that shuttles are really on his mind right now, you know? Maybe there's a shuttle out here? I just No, it's so hard. There are so many Scourge.
Okay, might have to rewind a little bit more to catch that shuttle. This is fun. I'm gonna hang out with you guys a little bit longer in this game. We've got another one coming though, so hit that like button if you enjoyed that, and we'll see what the second one has to come between these two players. So, okay, so there's our robotics facility. He hasn't really worried about lurkers today because there haven't been any. Understandably so. So this guy warps in. The robotics facility warps in, and it's immediately used to do nothing at all. And there we go. Okay, okay. Here's the here's the shuttle that I saw. Here at about 12 minutes. While well, mutas are out there causing all sorts of problems. Okay. So let's see if this guy does anything. We're just gonna stare at this shuttle. It's not looking promising. Oh no, it got loaded up with zealots. And then it is really afraid to go anywhere because oh and then it died. To Scourge, right? That was definitely Scourge. <laughs> Wait, there's another shuttle. Let's see what this one does. <laughs> okay, shuttle number two. Eh, right click on this guy. Oh my gosh. Right click on this guy. And he's here, hanging out, having a great time. Doesn't load anything up, just decides to come along with the army as they head over to try to deal with the shenanigans over this way that, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I think there were shuttles. I just think they didn't accomplish anything. I think the Sky Zerg was so powerful that it completely shut down the capabilities of Snow to do crazy shuttle stuff. How nuts is that? How absolutely crazy is that? Wow. Blah, blah, blah. Second round of Hydra's come through. We'll check out that final score in a second. GG. Woo! What a game from action, though. Holy cow. So, 125,000 points, 110 in favor of action. He outproduced the Protoss player by a 2 to 1 ratio. Got you know, outkilled by not that much, honestly. And that's a problem. 31 buildings raised is a huge deal. And then outspending by about 4,200 resources in 18 minutes does definitely seem to be enough. So that's a GG. Well done. I mean, that was <laughs> that was a new way to use Troy. That's for sure. Let's see what game two has. Don't go anywhere. Game two's on Radeon. Bottom right, blue Protoss. This time it is snow. Bottom left, it is red Zerg action. Uh, so we switched colors and it's a new map. It's Radeon, which is a new map. I did cast a game on it uh, a couple of days ago here. So yeah, this is it. So it's a four player map. Got ourselves a nice little ramp leading up to the main base. Low ground, natural, with eggs to help wall it off against an early pool. And uh, other than that, it's a pretty standard map, especially compared to Troy. That is certainly the case. And it's a four-player map with two other places to expand here. Wait, okay, this is a third base, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, never mind. We've got third base and then uh, one fourth base for each side of the map. So it's going to be a two-player game. So a lot of places to expand on a four-player map when you're playing 1v1. And yeah, man, ASL. ASL is ongoing here. Hmm. I wonder if they've released... Oh, there we go. It's going to be in nine pool. Here from action. I wonder if they have released the English VODs for the round of 16 yet. I will go check after this cast. Do, 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 do. Gateway opening here from Snow. Little probe scouting the right way. Eh? Eh, eh? Yes, indeed. Very, very good, PD the probe. Very good, indeed. My new phone is so weird. It does this thing where it doesn't push notify me about email that I'm getting to my personal email account? It does a great job um, notifying me 
of falconpaladin at gmail.com emails that I get, but it doesn't push notify me of stuff that I get to my personal account until like hours later. Then it's like, hey, look, here's a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, but I got this five hours ago. It's like, well, yes. I don't know what's going on. The old phone didn't have a problem with this. And it's just, I just upgraded from a Pixel 3 to a Pixel 5, which, hilarious. Because I think we're on Pixel 8. So I got a new phone three generations back from the current one. I just like the fingerprint sensor being on the back. It works so well. And from what I've under, what I've been told by people who get Pixels, they really don't like the on-screen thumb fingerprint sensor that's on the later uh, editions. And it's like, why did they change it? Why would they do such a thing? I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, guess what? Lings are here, but guess what? We've got a wall because these eggs are helping. This is exactly why these eggs are here. Forge coming in. He doesn't want to quite expand yet without having the ability to throw up a cannon because he's worried about how many lings are being produced here by action because it's more than, like, four. It's also not a million either, right? We got one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven of them, which means we need eight. And it looks like, yeah, one, the blood splatter, right? The blood splatter said one of them died here to the zealot, which it really shouldn't have done. But whatever. There's the expansion. Probe is maybe satisfied that there aren't, you know, 20 more lings on the way. So he is going to gamble with going for a Nexus before getting a cannon up. It's scary, though. Like, he is gambling here. Make no mistake about it. This is a gamble. It's a gamble chocolate, cho chocolate situation here for snow. And he is ready to throw down a cannon. It might just be a situation where you throw down a safety cannon at this stage. Yeah, this probe's just keeping an eye on these lings. Like it's not suddenly 15 lings, right? No. And action throws down a third base on the left side. So you know he's not trying to ling foot off of two base here. Right? I'm not sure they do a great job here anyway. Zealots in the wall. Now there's a cannon. Which again, more of a safety thing than anything else. He could hold against six lings, seven lings with zealots in the wall like this without a cannon. Might be a little touch and go. Might have to pull maybe some probe to do it. But not a huge deal. But you just feel safer with a cannon here, you know? Hydralisk Den on the way from action. He says, huh, my early pool did kind of stop some zealot pressure, right? So I am the one who knocks now. This is not a situation where I'm dealing with a bunch of zealots showing up into my base. I love this probe is still alive, by the way. Like, Snow's probe micro and Jukes, they're so good. I guess he's not getting metabolic boost. Yeah, that's right. Action's not. Who needs ling speed? Not me, says Action. I am a man of slow lings. I can kill probes out in the middle of the map without without speed for my guys. I mean, he doesn't have enough gas for anything yet because he threw it into muscular augments, which means he's gonna try to hydra bleh, gonna try to hydra bust here. Another cannon coming in. It's a little far set back, isn't it? This is cannon positioning to deal with lings not cannon positioning to deal with hydras right that is interesting so fast hydra bust off of three bases sitting at about 19 drones firing up a couple more and it's a corsair plus one opening this is the worst thing this is the worst thing for snow to do against a hydra bust is make a ton of corsairs and invest into the corsairs upgrades it is not good it is really not good. Alright, well, here's the deal. Your job is to scout. Your job is honestly less to kill overlords, and it's more to scout how many hiders are coming out here. Is there a spire? Right? Ooh, her macro hatches at the third base. There aren't a lot of drones up here. The hydras have arrived, and they're already pushing, so never mind. Who needed that guy to scout anything anyway? Forge at the front dies. It wasn't working on an upgrade actively. Range upgrade takes a minute. Zealot comes up just trying to buy time. Just trying to buy time for that gateway to not die. Losing your first gateway totally sucks. Yeah. Okay, more gateways coming up back inside the main base. A citadel of a dune on the way here too. Corsairs. I mean... You're forcing some hydras to stay home by sharking these Corsairs around, but uh, if you don't have Storm to deal with these hydras, it's a big ask, man. I know you're trying to get speed for your Zealots, 
which is pretty good. But if you're tossing a bunch of your resources, how far away are we from speed, I guess, is the question, right? Speed, and then we got to throw down a temple. Like, if there's not a Templar Archives now for snow, I'm going to be very surprised. All right, I'm very surprised. Snow, buddy. Snow, you need a Templar Archives. Are you just... Okay. No, I don't, he says. All I need is a lot of zealots with leg enhancements and plus one and corsairs with plus one attack still i'm still investing into this even though i keep taking hydro shots and it's not good for my overall health yo all right so the hydras are like we're gonna wait for our friends to show up here templar archives yes okay snow decides to go for a templar archives here at 745 these overlords aren't super healthy either, but again, it takes a lot of shots. If you have two Corsairs, it only takes about 20-something shots to kill an overlord, which is still a lot, man. All right, now he decides to bust in, snipes one of the cannons, but the Zealot count is still too heavy without even the speed upgrade. But the Hydras can't quite engage with that, and the pressure is continuing to be real. Runs in, snipes a cannon, runs out, loses two Hydras for that. Now it's like one-to-one -one Hydras... To zealots, which is not good if you're the Hydra player, but it is good if you're Protoss. Storm on the way, though. Temple Archives is done. Dude, Snow has enough cash to get Snow t or get Storm twice, man. What is he spending his money on? DTs would be fun, wouldn't it? There, I guess there's an Overlord up here, but it's oh gosh, this is a lot. This is a lot. A lot of speed lots, dude. They don't have plus one attack yet. The hiders are zero, zero. Oh, Corsair gets picked out. Every Corsair that dies. Okay, Overlord down, which means DTs are now more viable as defense at your front door. He did survive the Hydra bust attempt, which uh, that doesn't mean it's over. Aspire's on the way from action. Is he getting another macro hatch? This guy, he loves his macro hatches. Aspiring up here at the third base. Protoss, Storm on the way. I think Snow might hold this. Really think Snow might hold this thing. DTs, what did I say about DTs being more viable now? It's exactly what I said. This is a lot of Hydralisks, though. I mean, DT is going to shut stuff down for sure. Like, without a doubt. Shut things down for sure. Robotics facility on the way from Snow. Gate, gate, gate. Oh my gosh, and five mutas on the way from action. Boy, do Zerg players like their mutalisks in this matchup. I mean, I guess all of the Corsairs but one have died. Quick check to make sure I'm not a liar. I don't think I'm a liar. Pretty sure there's just this one Corsair flying around, and mutas are going to be way more effective. Oh! Oh gosh, run, fly as fast as your little jets can take you. Okay, so we're going to show up with mutas. There will be High Templar with Storm. There will be cannons. And cannons are coming up inside the main base here too. This is a sniff out. That Corsair saw the Spire and said, I don't have a lot of Corsairs. That probably means that action is going to make muta. So let's get some cannons up to help defend. All right, throwing a couple High Templar up here in the main base, too. Fourth base coming up top left side here from action while this attack is happening. That's genius. And it's all going to come down to this attack. How effective will these Mutalisks be? He sees one storm. And action backs right out. He's like, nope. Nope, absolutely not. We're not as not happening. This DT just out on the map. He's got zero kills, but he knows his time is soon. He can smell it. Uh, there is no defense here at this third base, mind you. This fourth base also has no defense, but it doesn't exist yet, so that's less concerning from a Zerg perspective. All right, so that TT is going to go to work on that fourth base. Oh, there's three more Corsairs now. Ooh, look who's been making Corsairs. Okay, Muta's not getting some work done. Scur it's the dance. It's the Scourge Corsair dance of antiquity. Mm. Wap. 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 Where are the overlords? Do they have speed? No! Pneumatized Carapace is on the way. Oh my gosh. 
This should not be allowed to happen. Why did you skip Pneumatized Carapace? Okay, Overlord's gonna show up in time to save this. But it has 160 HP. This is a very, very injured bleeding hatchery. All it would take like is one Zealot, one more DT getting up here, and that is the end of the day. So, third base warping in from Snow on the right side. Pushing out. He's got his Zealots, Dragoons, Corsairs, High Templar. Storm is done. He can feel the power coursing through him as he decides it's time to move out onto the map. Nothing the Zerg player can do against this except have a ton of stuff, which is kind of the Zerg superpower, isn't it? Ooh, Mutas find a little bit of an area to get a couple probe kills. Nice, it's now 47 drones to 44 probes. Hydras, no! Don't stack yourself on a bridge like this! That's it's, yeah, you're just asking for a storm in that situation. You're like, please. Please toss down a storm. Mutas are back. Dodging storm pretty effectively. 11 mutalisks. No carapace upgrades this time. No armor or attack upgrades on those mutas this time. Fourth base alive. Almost upgrading this to a lair to give it extra HP. Might not be a bad idea. Just a second lair. Might be a fine idea. Oh, where'd the army? Army out of position from snow, but not too far out of position. The hydras couldn't come in and snipe that nexus. They really, really wanted to, though. Mutas dive bombing on a high templar. Eating a full... St Ooh, storm to do it. Five mutas go down there. Already pretty injured thanks to, well, Corsair hits. What do we got? Two attack on the Hydras. One, one attack for the ground units for the Protoss here. Again, doesn't want to sit on this bridge for too long. Woo! Action's kind of full sending, y'all. Here he comes. Left side, top side, a right side engagement happening here too. Storms are coming hot and heavy, but the question is always is, are there enough storms? And the answer is, uh... Not yet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Not enough storms. Where are the High Templar? They are dead. They were target fired in particular here. Reinforcing Zealous coming from the south. Forcing the Hydras back. Reinforcing Hydras coming from the left side of the map. The Dragoons are getting hits in while they can because when there are no more Zealots, they start taking big punches right to the face. And this might be an action. 2-0 sneaky twofer here. I'm looking at it. It is not looking great. I keep looking for High Templar for snow, and I don't see any. And I see the number of hiders that action to produce here, and it's a lot. Yeah, these zealots, are they just... I was going to say, are they beelining for the top left corner? They're just trying to pick off reinforcements, I guess. Action's like, okay. Uh, I guess we'll come in here then with my plus two million billion hydras. Yeah, so it's a bit of a delayed Hydra bus, but that's kind of effectively what this is. Just got to deal with cannons and dragoons, which Hydras do. I mean, it's not like they aren't going to lose any of their buddies. Right, Hydras are going to die, but that's it. GG, too many Hydras. Uh, and action. Gets the win. Gets a 2-0 in this sneaky twofer. Wow. That was great. I mean, that was honestly... A great display of ZVVP from action against maybe the best Protoss player in the world right now. <laughs> Look at this guy go. Look at action just getting a nice little 2-0 against the terrifying snow, making him look almost pedestrian. Completely forcing him to do things he doesn't want to do in game one, right? All those bases are locked up. He has to expand way across the map to his third base. There are a million Scourge and Mutas flying around, and he's kind of stuck. And then in this base, it's just action making good choices. Hydra busting with the early pool, getting a ton of macro hatches up. Two macro hatches up at the third base. Macro hatch at the natural base. Mm, no other macro hatches, but still, for 15 minutes, that's a lot of macro hatches. And yeah. Storm was good, but there wasn't enough. That's kind of a lot of what games come down to. <laughs> Holy Hannah. So yeah, man, this is action. This is what action is capable of. Is this kind of terrifying, terrifying stuff. And honestly, more power to him for it here. Zerg fans are happy. Protoss fans not happy, but come on. We've had Protoss wins on the channel in the last week. I try to balance it out for everyone. But man, this DT, I don't know. Losing this hatchery, I'm not sure would have stopped action from winning this game. Would have been annoying for sure, but 
Whatevs. 96,000 points to 88,000 points here. Snow ahead and lost. Got out produced, got out uh, out killed. This ratio is actually not too bad from Snow. But 9 to 0 building raise is a problem. And getting outspent by action by about, uh, is that only about 1,800 resources in 15 minutes? Not a lot. That is not a lot of resources, but Hydras can be pretty cost efficient when they want to be, you know? So that was... That was thumbs up. That was a thumbs up little sneaky twofer, twofer for you today. And that's going to be it for me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. If you like what you saw and what you heard today, you can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.